Hello Grade 10s! In a previous lesson, we introduced the concept of the empirical formula and percentage composition. Today, we will do more complex examples of questions that involve these two concepts. Let's start with a little revision. The empirical formula is the formula that represents the smallest whole number ratio of the atoms in a molecule. An example is C3H8. We also get a molecular formula. This formula is the same as the empirical formula, or a multiple of it, and it is based on the actual number of atoms of each type in the compound. For example, if the empirical formula of a compound is C3H8, its molecular formula may be C3H8, or if the ratio is doubled, C6H16, and so on. What do you remember about percentage composition? This is the percentage of the mass a certain element has in relation to the total mass of a compound. To calculate the percentage composition, we take the mass of each type of atom in the compound and divide it by the total mass of the compound and then multiply it by 100. I'm sure you followed the calculations quite easily. We can summarize the steps to calculate the empirical formula. Three easy steps will get you to the correct answer. The first step is to determine the number of moles of each element. To do this, we use the formula number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass of the atom. In step two, we determine the mole ratio. Remember that the mole ratio is found by dividing each number of moles by the smallest number of moles calculated in step one. If you have done this correctly, at least one of these answers will be equal to 1. The final step is to multiply the ratio to get a whole number ratio. We don't want any decimals in the ratio. This means we need to multiply all the numbers within the ratio until all of them are whole numbers. This step-by-step -step process makes these questions quite easy. Let's do one together. A compound is analyzed and found to have 26,6 grams of potassium, 35,4 grams of chromium, and 38 grams of oxygen. Derive the empirical formula of the compound. The analysis refers to the mass of atoms of each element. For example, 38 grams of oxygen is the mass of oxygen atoms, not oxygen molecules. So, the molar mass that we will use is 16 grams per mole. Let's use the steps and a table to solve this question. Step 1 is to determine the moles of each element. This means we need to change the given masses to number of moles. The given masses were respectively 26,6 grams of potassium, 35,4 grams of chromium, and 38 grams of oxygen. To determine the number of moles, we divide by the respective molar mass. For the potassium, we divide 26,6 by 39. The chromium is 35,4 divided by 52, and the oxygen is 38 divided by 16. The ratio is therefore 0,68 potassium to 0,68 chromium to 2,375 of oxygen. The second step is to simplify the ratio by dividing by the smallest value. The smallest value is 0, 0,68, so we need to divide each number by this value. This gives us a new ratio of 1 to 1 to 3,5. This is not a whole number ratio, so we have to apply the third step and that is to multiply with an integer so that we can have whole numbers. If we multiply the ratio by 2, we get a new ratio of 2 to 2 to 7. Now, we can use this to write down the empirical formula as K2Cr2O7. So, following the steps helped us to find the empirical formula. Now, let's do a problem that involves the percentage of composition. To calculate the percentage composition, we take the mass of each type of atom in the compound and divide it by the total mass of the compound and then multiply it by 100. We can now use our knowledge to determine the number of moles of water of crystallization in salts. 
Before we do this, let's examine these in more detail. Here are two samples of copper 2 sulfate. The bright blue one is hydrated, which means that it has water in it. The salt on the right has no color because all the water has been removed. We say it is anhydrous. The water of crystallization refers to water that is found in crystalline framework of salt, which is not directly bonded to the metal cation, but which adds to the mass of the compound. A substance containing water of crystallization is called a hydrous substance or a hydrate. This water can be removed by heating. Always remember that when you use a Bunsen burner, you should hold the test tube opening away from you while you heat it and constantly move it around so that the heat is spread throughout the tube. Notice how the blue copper 2 sulfate become white copper 2 sulfate. The salt has become anhydrous. The water molecules are always combined in a definite ratio in the hydrate salt. Let me show you an example. Blue copper 2 sulfate is heated in a crucible which has a lid. There are also some water droplets. How many moles of water of crystallization are there in 24,9 grams of the salt with the formula of CuSO4.NH2O if it is gently heated until 15,9 gram of an off-white dry powder remains? The dot in the formula indicates that the water is trapped in the crystal of the compound. It is not a multiplication symbol. Why don't you try this on your own? We start by finding the mass of the water from the experimental data. The mass of the water that was driven off from the solid crystals is equal to 24,9 minus 15,9, leaving us with 9 grams of water. So, we have a mass of 15,9 grams of copper sulfate and 9 grams of water. Our next step is to convert these masses to number of moles. For copper sulfate, the molar mass is 159 gram per mole. So, 15,9 divided by 159 is 0, 0,1 mole. And for the water, the molar mass is 18, so 9 divided by 18 is 0, 0,5 mole. The third step in calculating the empirical formula is to determine the mole ratio by dividing by the smallest number of moles. In this situation, the smallest number is 0, 0,1. For copper sulfate, 0, 0,1 divided by 0, 0,1 is 1. And for water, 0, 0,5 divided by 0, 0,1 is 5. Therefore, the formula for hydrated copper 2 sulfate is CuSO4 with 5 moles of water of crystallization. This brings us to the end of a very busy lesson. Make sure that you practice more of these types of calculations. You can find more resources on our website. Until next time, goodbye.